Okay, so let's talk for a second about something that I feel like most of us have dealt with at one point or another, and that is the etiquette of drum sharing. Um, drum sharing, of course, being the idea of multiple drummers throughout the night using the same kit. Uh, so one drummer would bring their kit to a show and then everyone else would share that kit. And this is just done to prevent everyone from tearing down, setting back up, re-miking everything, sound checking. It's just to keep transitions tight uh, between bands. So um, I've found myself having to do this a fair amount the past few years and I've sort of developed in my own mind at least uh, sort of a, a common um, operating procedure or uh, you know standard of etiquette for what you should be expected to provide or what you should be expected to bring regardless uh, if you are the one sharing the drums or if you're the one using someone else's drums. So let's consider this from uh, the point that I'm in I feel like most of the time which is that I am using someone else's drum uh, drums. So if I'm using someone else's drum set, the two no-brainers for what I should be expected to bring are cymbals and snare. A lot of people will call these the breakables. Cymbals, I think, are fairly obvious. No one wants to be in the situation where you broke someone else's cymbal or they broke your cymbal. So that's just a no-brainer. Bring your own cymbals. Don't break other people's cymbals. Um, and then snare as well. Again, you don't want to be in the situation where you dented up someone else's heads and now they're mad about that. And then also, uh, the snare is just such a big part of your sound as a drummer that I feel like just for tonal reasons, you should want to bring your own snare anyways. So cymbals and snare, those are uh, ones that I feel like we can all agree. Everyone should bring, if you're sharing a kit, you should bring your own cymbals and snare. Now the other two that I will add to that are, um, I'll typically bring my own pedal and my own throne as well. And both of them are kind of a comfort thing. I feel like those are two really personal pieces of the kit that just kind of help you settle in and feel comfortable. You don't know what kind of pedal someone else is going to bring, if it's gonna be an old Speed King or like a double pedal, which I never use. And so I don't always bring my pedal, but, but nowadays I, I try and um, throw it in the car uh, when I'm off to the gig. It's small and easy to bring, and I don't always use it, but I'll almost always bring it with me just in case. And then the throne, same sort of thing. Um, it's, it's still shocking to me how many times I've used someone else's throne and it has been fixed in place for some reason and not just like a memory lock thing, like rusted into place or like bolted in a way that it doesn't move. Uh, which means that you can't adjust the height at all. So just to, to you know, prevent that situation from happening, I'll bring my own throne as well most of the time. So then from the other side of the coin, if I am the one providing the drums, um, I've also kind of developed what I think every, um, every drum share provider should be expected to provide. And I think this is where a lot of the breakdown happens in etiquette where people providing drums think, well, you know, they're using my drums, I'm doing them a favor, so they can just use whatever I bring, come hell or high water, you know, whatever it might be, and regardless of what they play, they're just gonna use whatever I have. And I think that's sort of true, but also sort of not true. Um, I, I think that the bare minimum that you should be expected to provide as a drum sharer is two toms, bass drum, hardware, uh, hardware for hi-hat, one crash, and one ride, and stuff that is functional. So I don't know how many situations I've been in where the hardware is completely janky, where like the hi-hat keeps sinking, or uh, you know the ride stand like doesn't hold the ride. Or here's here's one I find a lot where people either don't have wing nuts, which that's fine, not a big deal, but they don't have sleeves. So there's metal on metal contact between the um, between the stem on the cymbal stand and the cymbal, which if you don't know, leads to cracking. It will crack your cymbals if you have that metal on metal contact. And I think, I, I know it sounds probably a little fussy for me to say that I should expect that as someone using someone else's kit or that you should be expected to provide cymbal stands that are functional. Um, but I think it is kind of your responsibility if multiple people are using your kit and if you've agreed to loan out your kit that it should at least be functional. Uh, the other thing too is just having it set up for a standard four piece setup. I don't think anyone should be expected to provide you know, two rack toms or two floor toms or like an extra snare stand or anything like that. Um, I think the, the basics that should get most people through every gig would be a four piece kit and then hi-hat, uh, crash, and ride. 
and <laughs> there have been there have just been so many situations that I've gotten to the gig and there just hasn't been a rap tom or there's just been one cymbal stand and that's fine like I you know I, I, I don't mind in a larger sense uh, I, I will get through the gig and I, I won't complain about it but anytime I'm sharing a kit even if it's a situation where I might have only brought a floor tom for myself if I know other bands are going to be using my kit I feel like I don't want to put them in that awkward position where now they have to figure out all of their music on just a floor tom so I'll, I'll bring a rack tom even if I wasn't planning on using it if I'm the one sharing the kit so that's kind of what I feel like should be the the basic standard um, is a four-piece kit with hardware you know hi-hat uh, crash and ride now here's the other thing too I think you should also be expected to bring a pedal and be willing to share your pedal um, unless you specifically say hey I'm cool sharing my kit but everyone else just bring your cymbal snare and pedal or whatever it might be now the throne is something that I've kind of changed my mind on in the past year and I used to think that it was way too fussy to demand that everyone else bring their throne but I've sort of changed my mind on that uh, because the last time I provided my throne um, the band before me used it they were really grateful they were super nice and then I sat down on it and I have a rock and sock throne the the fabric thrones and we'll just say that it wasn't dry so that's just a situation that I don't want myself in and it's awkward for other people as well so the throne is something that I, if I'm sharing a kit, um, I will bring my throne and if someone really needs to use it, I of course will let them. But if someone says, hey Cole, can you share drums? I'll usually say, yep, that's totally fine. Just have drummers bring cymbals, snare, and throne uh, at, at minimum. So that's something I've kind of flipped on, but let me know what you think, uh, you know, if you think that it's silly to make everyone bring their own throne. I don't know. Um, just feels like kind of a personal thing. In any case, a couple of other idiosyncrasies that I feel like we should be aware of or at least make clear is uh, with the hi-hat stand, you should bring the clutch with it. If you are the one providing the hi-hat stand, the clutch is a part of that and you should be willing to let everyone else use your hi-hat clutch because First of all, I think it's ridiculous to expect people to bring their own clutches because the rod diameters are different, so there's a good chance that your clutch isn't going to work on someone else's hi-hat stand. So absolutely, you should be providing your own clutch. There have been so many times where I've gotten up and it's been like, all right, you're on in five minutes, and there just hasn't been a clutch for, for the hi-hat stand. They're like, oh, you didn't bring your own clutch? It's like, no, because I didn't know if you had a DW9000 or a Sonar or, or you know a PDP or whatever. So. That said, I will usually bring a clutch as well, or I usually have a clutch kicking around in the back of my car for that very situation um, as kind of a just-in-case thing. I think everyone should be expected to provide the clutch, but I will still bring one just in case. The other thing that I will always bring that I've talked about before to try and kind of keep myself out of these jams is uh, gaff tape. You can do a lot with gaff tape if, um, if you're getting metal on metal cymbal contact because someone doesn't have uh, cymbal sleeves, you can wrap that up with gaff tape, put a couple layers on there, check with them first, make sure that's okay with them, and, uh, and you won't get that metal on metal contact. Also, if there's stuff that's slipping or uh, you know whatever, things that are drooping or, or whatever, you can, you can usually gaff that up and, and make hardware at least functional for a set. And then sticks is another one that I feel like I shouldn't even have to say, but I will because the situation has arose where someone doesn't bring sticks. And if it's if it's like an honest mistake, if they're like, I don't know what I was thinking, like I walked out of the house without sticks, then you know, they yeah, they should have brought their sticks, but in a pinch, they really need them. I will loan sticks, but like Let's just make it clear that we should all be bringing our own sticks. I don't think I even need to, to mention that, but I will. Real quick, there's something else that I forgot to mention yesterday when I was filming that uh, I did want to mention, and that is that I will usually keep a cymbal stand in the back of my car at all times. So, you see here, almost always in the back of my car, I've got a DW Ultralight stand kicking around. Okay, so, 
Yet another reason why I really like those stands. They are super lightweight. I can keep them in my car and they don't really take up much room. It's not that big of a deal. And if uh, there's a super janky cymbal stand that uh, someone brings that I don't want to use, or if I just need an extra cymbal stand, if I want two crashes or whatever, then I've just got it there. Okay. But uh, the other thing we haven't really talked about yet is whether you should be allowed to change someone else's setup. So if you are using someone else's set and they've set it up for them and they're going on after you, should you be able to change angles, heights, adjustments, that sort of thing? I know a lot of people are really particular. Um, I try and not be so particular and I actually, kind of feel both ways about this one. If I'm the one sharing the kit, I will always let other drummers know you can change anything you want, change angles, adjustments, that sort of thing. I'll, I'll fix it afterwards. You know, I want you to be comfortable. But I'll also be willing to not change anything if I'm the one using someone else's kit. If they say that they're cool with it, I'll usually ask. I'll be like, hey, you know, is there anything you don't want me to change? Or, you know, I'm, I'm okay not changing anything. Sometimes they'll say, yeah, don't, don't change anything. And I'll just sit down and play and that's fine. But most of the time they'll be cool and they'll be like, yeah, go ahead, you know, change whatever you want. So I'll, I'll just try and keep it minimal. I will try and not adjust toms at all unless they're really, really uh, in a weird position for me. But I'll change uh, usually snare height and then maybe hi-hat height and I'll try and not uh, adjust anything else. So I'll try and adjust as, as little as possible. I think that's just, again, sort of a, a respect thing and kind of an etiquette thing just to make it not too difficult for the person who's providing the kit to, to come back in and, and play how they feel comfortable. So that's all I can think of right in this moment. I know I'm probably leaving some situations out or some things out. Um, so leave a comment and let me know uh, if there's anything I didn't touch on or if you agree or disagree with my philosophies on uh, the etiquette of drum sharing. Maybe I'll make a follow-up video if I think of some more things. But uh, yeah, let me know in a comment um, what you think. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.